open and this is my chance project for CE2 20. Our first problem is with regards to design of single reinforced concrete beams. So for our first problem, for our prop concrete cantilever beam has a width of 320 millimeters and overall depth of 510 millimeters. Design the beam for the required number of 20 millimeter diameter bars for tension for maximum positive moment. Use F frame C is equal to 21 MPA, FY is equal to 345 MPA, Dead load is equal to 28 kN per meter and live load is 47 kN per meter. Note that the concrete cover is 50 mm. So the first thing I did is to calculate the ultimate load, WU, which is using the formula 1.2 D plus 1.6 L, which is dead load and the live load. And then substituting such, we will be arriving with the answer 108.8 kN per meter for the ultimate load. Our first step is to solve for the balancing ratio. So for the solve for the balance for, uh, steel ratio, we'll be using rough B is equal to 0 0.85 times F prime C B1 times 600 over Fy times 600 plus Fy. Note that our value for B1 is 0 0.85 from the table or 22.2.2.4.3 from the NSCP 2015 since our value for F frame C is 21, which falls under, uh, which is between 17 and 28, which denotes so a value of 0 0.85 for B1. Now substituting, we'll be arriving for the value of raw B, which is 0 0.027923. Our next step is to solve for the moment diagram. Since this is a indeterminate beam, we will be using, uh, I used uh, three, moment equation using the formula here and I will be not I will not be delving deeper here as this is a past concept uh, from the structural theory and to solve this uh, using such equation I arrive with the value for mb which is negative 217.6 kN meter which is here for b and then ma which is negative 380.8 kN meter which is here and then uh, taking moment at A, you, uh, I, uh, I got the value for RB, which is 516.8, which is the point load here. And then I cut the section in order to get the value for X here. And then the value for MB here, which is the highest point here, which is 193.8. Our next step is to calculate for the boundary moment. For the boundary moment, we will be using the strain uh, factor, uh, which is greater than or equal to 0 0.04. According to the code for non precessed beams, uh, strain shall be at least 0 0.004. So for raw max, uh, then uh, due to this, we will be using the formula uh, in line with this, which is raw max is equal to 0 0.85 F prime C B1 over Fy times C times over 7. Then substituting, we will be arriving with the answer 0 0.018848. Then we'll calculate for AS max using the formula uh, raw max times BD. So zero, uh, substituting, we will be getting 2774.4256. Then for C max, we will be using the formula T over 7 times T. Then we'll get 197.143 millimeters. Then for Amax, our formula, the formula we use is uh, B1 times C max, and then we'll get 167.571 millimeters. Then for M and Max, uh, our, the formula we use is uh, AS times FY times D, which is here, uh, 510 minus the cover, 460 minus a max over two, and then we'll get 300, uh, 360, 103 kilonewton meter. Our next step is to use the formula of P for strain in the transition zone of 0.04. So this formula from 0.04 in strain is 
0 0.65 plus 0 0.25 times fs minus fy over 1000 minus fy. And since our strain is 0 0.04, uh, the value for fs will correspond to 800. So substituting, we will be arriving with a reduction factor of 0 0.823664, and then we'll multiply it to our mn max, just 360.103, then we'll get 296.604 kN. We'll compare the we'll compare it to factor to the factored moment of MU, which is 193.8. And since MU is less than uh, the reduced MN max, our beam, uh, we can conclude that our beam can be supported without compression bar. And since because of this, it will be singly reinforced. Our next step is to calculate for the required steel area. Uh, using this formula, we will be acquiring the value for our n. So mu is equal to uh, v r n times d times d squared. So mu is this value here, uh, which is the reduced uh, value, and then 193.8. Oh, wait, no, no, it's the mu value from the moment diagram. I'm sorry. 193.8 kilonewton meter times 10 raised to 6 because it's kilonewton meter. Uh, and to be stagnant with every uh, uh, kilonewton we'll be using. So uh, the value for the, this reduction factor is, as calculated before, is 0 0.823664. And then substituting, we'll get the value for Rn, which is 3.47487. And then for the value of rock, uh, we'll be using 0 0.85 F prime C over Fy times 1 minus square root of 1 minus 2 times Rn over 0 0.85 F prime C. Our value for F prime C is, as stated here, is 21. And then we'll get the value for rock, which is 0 0.011308. Now for raw mean, we'll be also getting raw mean. Uh, and the formula used for that is 1.4 over Fy, and then our Fy is 0 0.45 NPA, then we get 0 0.00405. And since our P, our raw, is greater than raw mean, we will be using our value for raw, which is 0 0.011308. Our next step is to calculate for AS, and it's acquired using the formula raw BD, and then substituting, we'll get 1,664.5376 millimeters squared. Uh, and then we will be using this value to calculate for the number of tension bars. Uh, using AS is equal to uh, the area times N. So our value for AS this year, 1,664.5376 is equal to pi over four times 20 squared. Uh, note that this is the uh, diameter of the tension bars that was stated in the problem. And then really substituting and then uh, calculating, we will get a value for n, which is 5.298. And since we can't have uh, any decimals here, we will be rounding it up to six. So we'll get six bars for the tension bars, for the number of tension bars. Our next problem is analysis of singly reinforced concrete beams. So this problem is fairly simple. And uh, the problem states that to determine the capacity of the beam shown below, use F prime C is equal to 28 MPA, F S is equal to 85 MPA, S min is equal to 28 mm, and N is equal to 7. So our first step to do is to solve for the following factors. So we'll solve for depth 1, depth 2, and depth 3. So for depth 1, we will be using uh, the height, 770, minus 40, minus 10, minus uh, the diameter here, which is 28 here, 28 over two, which is equal to 706 millimeters. Note that the 40 and 10 here are from the NSCP code and are mostly the things, uh, the values that we will be using. Uh, for D2, we'll be using D, D1. So the value is D1 here, minus S min, which is 28 then minus dB, which is 28, and then we'll get 650 millimeters. The same goes for D3, which is 650 minus 28 minus 28, and then we'll get 594 millimeters. 
the next step is to calculate for the n times as, which is 7, which is the value for our n times the area by over 4 of 4 times 28 squared times 5. Uh, note that this 5 here is since this uh, row over here has 5 bolts. So we, we multiply it by 5. So we get 6,865 millimeters squared. Uh, same goes for N times AS2. And since there are only four uh, bolts in this row here, we will be only multiplying by four. And same goes for N times AS3. Then we'll get uh, the value for FC, which is 0 0.45 times F prime C. And since the value for F prime C is 28 MPA, uh, we multiply to 0 0.45, then we'll get 12.6 MPA. Our next step is to locate for the neutral axis using this formula here for x. <coughs> x. Uh, by substituting the values that we acquired, that, such as n and as1, we will be arriving with the value for x, which is 361.990 millimeters. Uh, uh, also, rb is 250 here. So the next step is to compute for the moment of inertia. So to compute for the moment of inertia, we will be using this formula here. And then by merely substituting the values, uh, note that here uh, I placed A for X as to make things easier and as to make things easier for my place as I just stored it in my calculator. And then uh, using that, calculating for the value of I for inertia, we will be arriving at 8,877.55 DOT 6 times 10 raised to 6 millimeters raised to 4. Raised to four. Then our next step is to solve for the capacity. To solve for the capacity, we'll be using the formula FC is equal to MCX over the inertia. So solve for the solve for MC, uh, we'll just substitute 12.6 here for FC. And then uh, for A, for X, 361.990 over inertia, and then we'll get 309.006 millimeter. And then we'll get, uh, we'll, we'll get the value for MS in order to compare it to see which capacity is well suited for this uh, design here. So to get that, we will use the formula FS is over N is equal to MS times D minus X over I and A. But the D1 here is here, which is which as we calculated before is 706 millimeters. Then by merely substituting, we'll get 350.226 kN meter. And since MC is less than MS, we'll be using MC for our M capacity. So we get have 309.006 kN meter. Our next step is to design uh, is a problem. Our next problem is in regards to design of W reinforced concrete beams. So uh, for number three, it's basically the same problem as before, but for here, we'll be considering the design to design the beam for flexure at the fixed point A of the beam. Here at A, then it has a width, the beam has a width of 320 millimeters, overall depth 510 millimeters, F frame C 21, MPA, FY is equal to 345 MPA, lead load of 28 kN meter, and live load of 47 kN meter. Note that the center of the bars is 15 millimeters from the extreme fiber. So our first step is to solve for the factor of moment MU at the fixed point A. A. So calculate, uh, using the three moment equation, we'll be arriving with the uh, value for MA, which is negative 80.8. And instead of using uh, having the value for 193.8 as our MU, we will be now using 380.8 since it's what the problem stated in. Now it will be considered as a factored moment to fix section. So next step is the same for singly, which in, which will be using uh, calculating for the boundary moment. Uh, but in the case here, the boundary moment for W reinforced beams, 
uh, for W reinforced beams is 0 0.005 as to ensure a reduction factor of 0 0.90. Uh, but we uh, we don't know this yet. But uh, as it is also uh, recommended more to use the value for strain, which is 0 0.005. So we'll be using it here. And now for PT, we will be using the formula 0 0.85 F prime C times V1 over Fy times V over 8. We'll be getting 0 0.016491. For AS, we'll be acquiring the formula 2400 uh, Pro BD. Uh, we'll get 2,427.6 millimeters squared. And then we'll treat it as our area 1 for now. And then AS1 for now. Then AT, if you go to B1CP, if you go to 0 0.85 times 172.5, so you go to 146.625 millimeters. For MN, uh, we'll be using formula AS, FY times D minus A over 2. And then we'll get 223.859 kilonewton meter. And since we'll be considering a minimum strain, uh, 0 0.05, uh, the, the strength reduction factor is equal to 0 0.90. And then to confirm everything, uh, we will be multiplying to zero, the 0 0.90 reduction factor to our MP, and then we get 291.473. And since our MU is greater than MP, we can say that the uh, beam requires a doubly reinforced design. Our next step is to calculate for the excess moment. So for the excess moment, it is here. Uh, P, M, and 2. And to calculate for this, we'll be just simply uh, subtracting 291.473 from 380.8, then dividing that value to 0 0.90, and then we'll get 99.252 kilonewton meter. Then the uh, next step is to calculate for the tension steel. And this is the only using the formula M and 2 is equal to T, uh, M and M is equal to T times D minus D prime, and then substituting. Uh, and since uh, T, uh, tension is equal to AS times the FY, AS is AS FY, so it's AS times 245 times 460, which is the depth here, and then the D prime is 50. As said here, the central to the part is 50 millimeters from the string fiber. So AS is equal to uh, AS2 is equal to 701.675. And to get the value of our AS, we will be just simply adding AS1 here and then AS2 here. Then we we'll get the value for the area of the tension bars, which is 3,129.275 millimeters squared. Now let's calculate for the compression steel uh, area. Uh, Based, uh, uh, so we'll uh, use tension is equal to uh, compression here for this area since and then uh, using the formulas denoted to tension and then for compression, we will be solving for the value for F prime S and then which is equal to 600 times C minus D prime over C. And for the value of C, it's equal to 3 over 8T. So 3 over 8 times 460 is equal to 172.5. Then we'll get uh, substituting it to the equation for F prime S, we'll be getting 426.087. And since this value is greater than Fy, we will be using uh, the value of Fy, which is 345. Uh, we will be always using the lower value, the 2. And then substituting to get the value of A prime S here from this formula here, we will be getting the value 701.675 times 345 over 345. And then we we'll get 701.675 millimeters squared, which is the area for the compression parts. Our next uh, problem is 
about analysis of doubly reinforced concrete beams. So, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, for this, the section shown will be used for a simply supported beam that is 6 meters long. Determine the maximum uniform load using F prime C is equal to 24 MPa, Fs is equal to 135 MPa, and uh, the unit width of concrete, which is 23.5 kilonewton meter cube, and N, which is equal to 7. So our first step is to solve for the following factors. So for Fc, we'll be just using 0 0.45 times F prime C, which is 24. So we'll get 10.8 MPa. For D prime, uh, it's simply CC plus DS, which is 40 plus 10 in the code, plus 32 over 2. So tong 32 na to is in diameter ng beams, which is a diameter here of the bolts. So 66 meters. So yun D is equal to H minus D prime. So 550 here, the height minus 66, which is D prime, we we'll get 484. So for NAS, which is for uh, the tension side, uh, it's simply 7 times the area times the number of bolts, which is 4. So we get 7,168 pi. And then for the compression side, uh, we'll be using 2n minus 1 times as. So 2 times the n is 7 minus 1 times the area, uh, 32 squared times 2. There are only two bolts here on the compression side. So we get 6,656 pi. Our next step is to locate for the neutral axis. So for the neutral axis, uh, we'll be using this formula here. 1 half bx squared plus 2n minus 1 as times x minus d prime. So we go to NAS times D minus X, and then we'll get uh, substituting, we will get the value of X, which is equal to 278.020. Our next step is to calculate for the moment of inertia using this formula here. And then by merely substituting the values you've got, you acquired, that's just X here, uh, we'll get the value for inertia, which is 4760, but 671 times 10 raised to 6 millimeters raised to 4. And then our next step is to calculate for the M cap. Uh, for here, we'll be considering three moments. And for our first one is FC, is equal to MCX over I. So substituting and then cross multiplying, we're getting the value for MC, which is 184.98 kilonewton meter. For MS, we'll be using the formula FS is equal to N over, is equal to MS times D minus X over I. And then we'll get the value for MS, which is 44, 445.77 kN. Our next is for the value of MCS. Uh, for MCS, we will be using F prime S over 2N. And so you go to MCS times X minus D prime over I. And N is 7, F prime S 135 here. Then MCS uh, here. And then uh, simply solving, we get the value for 216.520 kN. And to, for the value of M cap, we will be considering the smallest moment out of the three. And the smallest moment out of the three is for MC, which is 184.93 kilonewton meter. And then we will be using this in order to solve for the maximum uniform load using uh, MU is equal to WL plus 23.5 times 0 0.4, which is here, converted to meters, 0 0.5 here, converted to meters, height, B and height, then four squared, over A, and we can get the value for the maximum uniform load, which is 87.297 kilonewton meter. Our next problem is with regards to design of stirrups. So for the design of stirrups, uh, the problem here is the a little bit. The beam width, which is equal to 16 inches, D is equal to 20 inches, F prime C is equal to 3,900 PSI, and FY is equal to 55,000 PSI. Determine and design the spacing of the vertical stirrups. So from the given figure here, we can see that there is a point of 24 kips, which is denoted as a dead load. And here there's a uniform load of 1.7 kips feet for, and a 2.1 kips feet for the live load. Our first step is to draw the view diagram, which is here. So to draw that, uh, we'll be first acquiring the value for WU, which is 1.2 DL times 1.6 LL. So the value for here is 
killing uh, kips over feet. Then for PU, it's equal to 1.2 times 24, which is the point total here, times 28.8, which is equal to 28.8 kips. Now let's solve for the value of VU max, which is equal to 11, 11 here, times 5.4, which is the value of WU here, plus 28.8, and 28.8 is the value of 1.2 times 24 here, over 2, and then we'll get the value for VU max, which is 73.8 kips, just here. And then we'll get the value for VU, VU is equal to 73.8, minus 20 over 12 times 5.4, we will get 64.8 kips. Our next step is to determine the syrup required. So we'll be using this formula here for uh, uh, VC. So using the reduction factor of 0 0.75 times two times uh, F prime C, which is 3,900, uh, square root of that times B, which is 16, times D, which is 20. So B, D, we will get the value 29.975 kips. Then we divide it by two, and then compare it to the value for VU, and then we'll get, uh, and because of uh, this value for VC here is less than VU, uh, this problem connotates that stirrups are required for the B. Our next step is to solve for the location of the required stirrups. So for the first stirrup, uh, we'll be using 73.8 tips minus 15.2 over uh, times 5.4. Not that these values are from the previous year, right here. And then we get 10.85 from the support, facing from facing the support. Then we get another 73.8 minus 29.975 over 5.4 here. 73.8 minus 29.975 over 5.4. Then we get 8.115 from the support, using from support. Our next step is to acquire the required shear strength from the stirrups. So we'll be using this formula here, VC is equal to VU max times VC minus MX. Which you will get 43.825 minus 5.4x. And our next step is to assume number three stirrups with two legs uh, here. So for AV, it's equal to 0 0.11 times 2. So I get 0 0.22, which is great. And for the required S, is equal to the reduction factor 0 0.75 times AV times FY times D over VS. And the required VS is 64.8. Which is here, VU minus 29.975, which is VC. So we'll just subtract it and then for 0 0.75 and 0 0.22, and then we'll get 5.212 inches. So for our next step is to, for the maximum spacing according to code. So, for the maximum spacing according to the code, so we'll use the formula for times F times C times B times D. So B is 16, D is 20, F times C is 2,900, and then we get 79.95 kips. And for VS, we'll be <coughs> really just subtracting again uh, 64.8 minus uh, VC here. So over the reduction part, there is 0 0.75, which is 46.43. And since uh, this uh, value is lower than this value here, we'll be using the formula S max is equal to AVFY over 50 times B. So AV is 0 0.22 and FY is 55,050 times uh, P, which is 60. Then we get the value for S max, which is 15.125 inches. Our next problem is with regards to the design of one-way slab. For the design of one-way slab, uh, this problem says, design the slab M and JK in the figure if the dead load pressure is 7.35 kPa and the lead load pressure is 4.05 kPa. Use FRMC is equal to 27.7 MPa and FY is equal to 420 MPa. Then dimension of 350 times 500 millimeters. Use 10 millimeters reinforcement. So our first step is to check the ratio of the long span to the short span. 
our long span uh, length is 7 meters here, and then for our short span is 3 meters. Since, since their quotient is 2.333, which is greater than 2.0, according to the code, uh, the design calls for a one-way slab. Our, our next step is to assume a one-meter strip on the side of the considered slab. Our considered slabs are MN and JK, so we'll be considering the one-meter strip on that side. And this is uh, this precision because the slab will bend for particular towards orientation. Our next step is to solve for the minimum thickness of the slabs using this table here, 47.3.1. Uh, according to, uh, by analyzing this slab here, we can say that the support condition is 1N continuous and the formula used is L over 24. And L is basically 300 over 24, which is 125 millimeters. Our next step is to check if thickness is adequate for shear. So for dead and live, so 1.2. And 7.35, 8.82 here, 1.6 times 4.05, 6.48 here. And then we get the value for the ultimate load, which is 15.3 kN meter. Our next step is to check if the thickness is adequate to shear using the total factor load. So using this uh, table here, table 406.5.4, approximate shears, uh, the exterior phase of first interior support. Since uh, this, uh, we'll be considering M and JK here. We'll be using 1.15 W L N over 2 is equal to V U max. And by uh, to get the value of L N, it's simply 3 and 0 0.35, which is 3.65. Uh, this is 3, 3 here, minus this dimension here, 250 mm. And convert to meter, 0 0.35, so 2.65 meters. So 1.15 times 15.3. And then we'll get the value for B of X. Then next is to compute for the design shear strength. And then uh, using this formula here, BC, we'll get 58.008 kilonewtons. Our lambda is 1, and FRMC is 20.7, B is 1,100, 0.75 for the value of B. And since V of max is less than BC, we can say that the design is adequate. Our next step is to calculate for positive and negative moments. For positive moments, we'll be using uh, this condition here for the end span, since this, uh, this uh, area here for M and JK is for end span. And then we'll be using WLN squared over 14. And for the negative, so for the negative side, uh, we'll be using more than two spans since there are more than two spans here for the slabs. So WLN LN squared over 10. And we'll be acquiring the value 7.674 kilonewton meter and 10.744 kilonewton meter. Our next step is to design the reinforcements using this formula here. Rn is equal to m over bbd squared. And then we get 0 0.853 meter pa. Next, we'll get rho is equal to 0 0.85 frmc over fy times 1 minus square root of 1 minus 2 rn over 0 0.85 frmc. And we'll get 0 0.0228. 8, and then for e, a raw max will be using this formula here. It's 3 over 8 times 0 0.85 FRNC, V1 times Fy. And then we'll get 0 0.01335. And since this value is greater than raw, uh, we can say that the design is okay. And now for the reinforced limits, we'll be using table 407.7.6 from the NSCP. And since it's the form bars are relative reinforcements, uh, uh, since our Fy is Greater is equal to 420 MPA, we'll be using these two formulas here, and which uh, whichever of the two results to the higher value, we will be using that. And then for substituting AG and FY, we get 220, 225. AG, we get 175. And since this is the higher value, we'll be using this. And now we will be calculating for the spacing. And the formula for the spacing is basically AB. So the uh, the area and 10 is from the reinforcement here squared times 1000 over 0 0.0028, which is the value for AS here, which is probably D. So probably D is it okay? S is equal to 349.06585 millimeters. Our next uh, problem is design of two way slab. So for the design of two way slab, uh, 
uh, using the coefficient method, designing the spacing of 15 millimeter reverse along the midstrip of 500 millimeters times 600 millimeter corner slab, our superimposed dead load is equal to 6.8 kPa and live load is 8.0 kPa. T is equal to 1.75 millimeters. F frame C is 21 MPa. F Y is 420 MPa. And the unit weight of concrete is 23.5 kilonewtons over m cubed. Our first step is to uh, determine if this design calls for a two-way slab. So for this, it's S over L. It's 4,800 over 6,000. And since this value is greater than 0 0.5 and not greater or equal to 1, we can say that the design calls for a two-way slab. This, uh, these uh, parameters here are according to the code of the NSCP. That was our next step to determine the case of the design. We can see that uh, these sides are discontinuous, and these sides are uh, here, uh, similar to case 4. So we can say that it's case 4. Calculate for this, and next step is to calculate for the slab loads. W slab is equal to WC density, which is 23.5 times 17.5. 17.5 here, uh, 0.175 here for the thickness here, stated here. So convert it to meters, and then we'll get 4.1125 kPa. And for the dead load, it's 4.1125 kPa, W slab, the 6.8 of the superimposed dead load. So I get 10.9125 kPa. And then finally, we'll get the value for WU, which is 1.2 DL plus 1.6 LL. And then we'll get 25.895 kPa. And since we'll be considering, uh, uh, also in the next step, we'll be considering a one meter step. So we'll just multiply it by one meter and then we get 25.895 kilonewton per meter. Since the design is con continuous, consider only one meter strip for the design. Analyzing the beam, it deflects for, uh, only one meter strip for the design. Since the design is continuous, I mean, consider only one meter strip for the design. Analyzing the beam, it deflects in this way. A negative moment and then positive moment since it rises and then negative moment again. So, and also our assumption for the continuous end moment here is zero because we assume that the other parts of the slab could carry the moment. So look, our next step is to look at the two-way slab coefficient table for negative moments. So here, uh, using this table here, uh, we can say uh, from M, which is here for short span over long span, which is 0 0.8, which is here. And then for case 4, which is here, we can target the numbers for CS, 0 0.071, and for the short span. And then for the long span, which is CL is 0 0.029. Uh, 